but just like the weather, this bike's ridiculous too. I think it's my favourite e-bike. This is the Engwe L20, a cargo light step through e-bike that might look fairly utilitarian and unassuming, but actually it's a bit of a beast. Engwe would have you believe that this is a plain old 250 watt 15.5 mile per hour e-bike, but they also know that a lot of their customers have other ideas. In this video, we'll find out how this Clark Kent farm boy of an e-bike can easily turn into the bike of steel. Well aluminium. We'll see how fast the bike really goes, check the brakes, see how it climbs hills, and by the way, it does climb hills, and we'll address that claim range of a mind-boggling 140 kilometers. So here I am on the Engwe L20, which is a cargo bike from Engwe, 250 watts, not foldable, 48 volts, which is interesting because usually, ow! Because you, oh my God, there's a reason that the rain is hitting me so hard in the face on this legal 250 watt e-bike. The fact that it is 48 volts is interesting because usually they're only 36 volts. If an e-bike is 48 volts, there's a good chance that it's at least really 500 watts. And this legal 250 watt e-bike it's currently powering me at 23 miles per hour. The bike came with a user manual, a charger that charges the bike in about six and a half hours. Engwe are still supplying it with a two pin plug and that really dodgy adapter that makes really horrible electrical noises whenever I use it. Please sort it out Engwe, UK plugs please. It also comes with a toolkit and some zip ties, so it's Dexter's bike. It came pretty well packed and it was simple to put together, although I did have to adjust the mechanical disc brakes. So this is Pedal Assist 3, which trundles me along at about 15 miles an hour. 4 takes us up to 18 miles an hour, which is a decent speed. I like that speed. What do you think? What should the legal e-bike speed assist speed be stick it at 15.5 bit more bit less let us know in the comments i'm happy to report that the throttle on this e-bike more on this in a second will allow you to access the maximum amount of power if needed no matter what pedal assist level you're in which is really handy to get out of uh, two situations. When it arrives, the bike is restricted to 15.5 miles per hour and the throttle is not working. And you can turn it on at your own risk, of course. I've taken the bike to America. So now I want to beat the lights. So a bit of throttle, I'm powering up the hill. 21, turn the throttle off back into pedal assist four, really handy. I've got to say, first impressions, this bike feels really, really nice. It's a step free bike, as you might see, which means you don't have to hoik your leg over the back to get on, you can just nice and easy step through, which helps a lot of people out. Now, usually, step free bikes, they kind of look a bit, not as exciting as they could, but I think this bike looks awesome. Yes, it's step through, but it's got these cool BMX handlebars. It's got the chunky four inch wide, 20 inch diameter fat tires which are awesome. If you look at it, the L20 actually looks like one of those BMX scooters. We used to call them Scootexes, only the L20 has a seat and pedals. I swear, the more you look at the bike, the more things you notice, like the alloy wheels on the fat Chaoyang tires that make the bike look really cool. The 13 amp hour 48 volt battery is easily removable, meaning you don't have to carry the 34 kilogram aluminium bike up to your charger if you don't want to. But never fear, you can also lock it into place with the key. In fact, it also has to be locked in for it to turn on. So no key, no power. 
The bike can be carried, but it is pretty heavy. The seat is nice and comfy, and the stand is sturdy and adjustable. Also sturdy are the metal mud guards and the front and rear racks. The rear carries up to 25 kilograms, and the front 13 kilograms. As always, there's a nice little bell. Ding, ding. The hand grips feel really good. It's got those little bits that stick out. I feel nice. I can kind of rest on them. But enough of those little bits and bobs. Let's see how fast the bike can go once you've unlocked the top speed. How fast can I go? Let's see. Speed test. Go. 27. 28. Does he? 29. 29. 28. Ah! Ah. Right. To be fair, the speedo got to 30. The GPS said 29. Woo! Ah. Without all that illegal furious pedaling, the bike will happily cruise along at around 25 miles per hour, maybe more if you're lighter than me. It feels very similar to the M20. I feel like maybe it's got the same motor inside, but it's been badged up as 250, which I'm totally not against. Also like the M20, the L20 has the clear landscape monochrome screen. It's basic, but it's much nicer than the LCD screens that were on most e-bikes just a few years ago. It has the budget conscious Shimano Tawny 7-speed gears and mechanical rather than hydraulic disc brakes. Both of these are fine as long as they're adjusted properly. Let's see how those brakes hold up. It is worth mentioning though if you hadn't noticed, it was pretty wet out there. 25 miles an hour. Whoa! The back end came out of it there. Right, I stopped at that that drain, but I, <laughs> I let the I let the brakes go to stop the back end coming out. Let's try again. Twenty miles an hour. Okay. So from here to the lamppost. Oh, saddle's a bit loose. I'm really impressed with this bike so far. Feels good. Now, it hasn't got rear suspension, so I do feel it a bit up the bum sometimes. However, on normal roads, I tend to turn it off because the fat tires do a really good job at cushioning. The front suspension is lockable, and I've currently turned it off. Because I do quite like a bit of stiffness to my ride, if I'm honest. Of course, if your ride becomes a little bumpier, then you can easily unlock the suspension with a little flick of the blue dial on the forks. Uh, open it up. There we go. Doink, doink, doink. First bumps. Feels fine. Just firing over the grass. You ready? You ready? Sitting down as well. It's bumpy. All right, more. Oh, 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 oh dear. Without that rear suspension, you really do feel them at the back, but it, it helps a bit at the front. But thing is, without front suspension, it's really quite like thuddy on your arms. So it helps that, but it still pops your ass in the air. So the suspension works pretty well, but the dial on the left, which is usually preload, didn't seem to do that much, or it could just be that I didn't notice. Suspension travel was good, and it never felt like bottoming out. So we've tested the suspension, the brakes, and the top speed, but how would the not-so 250 watt L20 do when faced with our hill climb test, Sandy Lane? Let's find out. Sandy Lane, fake 250 watt e-bike, three, two, one, and go! Throttle response, fairly instant. This is level five. Will it get up? It's interesting to know. 15 miles an hour. 16. Come on. Slowing. Doesn't feel like as fast as, say, the Engine Pro or the M20, but we've already got further than a lot of bikes have got in the past. 11, 10. Nine. There's that corner there. If I can get past that corner, then we've made it. And it's still going. Throttle only, so no help. Looks like he's going to make it. <laughs> it looks like this 250 watt bike is going to make it. That's awesome. 
It is, it doesn't feel like it's gonna stop. It's going faster than the e-scooters, I think. Nine, 10, starting to speed up again now, as it levels off a bit, 11. This is about an 11% hill. It's not the steepest, but it's pretty steep. And we're about to get to the finish point, so it's made it. Three, and no, stop. So let's see how the Angrate L20 did. Oh, wow, I, I love this bike. So amazingly, the L20 manages to be the second fastest e-bike up the hill and the fourth fastest vehicle overall, narrowly beating the Engre M20, possibly due to the slightly lower weight. And it's also worth noting that it beat the Engwe EPT Pro, an officially 750 watt e-bike. It's a proper beast of a bike. It's like a tank. I really like it, especially in green. It comes in white as well, it comes in pink. It's funny, I did ask Engwe, I said, um, you know that L20? It feels a bit fast. What wattage is it really? And they replied to, to me, they got back to me and they just said, 250. Right. Not even a wink emoji, just 250. Say no more. Because uh, I'm going 25 miles an hour on a 215 without any effort. In America, of course. I've made a couple of videos about e-bike laws already with regards to e-bikes needing more power for hill climbing and a throttle to add to safety and I really love the way Engwe are going about things. I love that the bike is classified as 250 watts and yet has enough power to get a heavy dude like me up a fairly steep hill without any effort. And of course, being a cargo bike, you could be carrying up to an extra 40 kilograms of luggage so the extra pulling power is extremely useful. It's a proper jack of all trades bike. The fact that it can go 25 miles an hour, more if you pu push it. The carriers, the, the rear rack, the front rack, I can, I don't, I'm not really sure what I'd use the front rack for, maybe, you know, put an alien in there. But uh, I know that it could get use. 13 kilograms is a very usable weight. It's not quite a basket, but you could strap things to it if you wanted to carry it. And then the rear rack, I'm gonna, personally, I'm gonna put a seat on it, because I've used a seat before, I carry my son around, he loves going around on these, so I'm going to put that on the rear rack, he'll love that. Yeah, this is, this is a keeper, this bike. Have I told you I'm impressed with this bike? I'm impressed with this bike. So let's talk about that claimed range of 140 kilometres, or about 86 miles. So, that 48 volt battery is 13 amp hours, which gives it a capacity in watt hours of 624 which is a decent size and we reckon you can get 140 kilometers so with full pedal assist 5 and liberal use of the throttle I get about 22 to 23 miles of usable power. As the battery runs into the last bar the speed doesn't drop drastically, it starts to cruise at about 22 miles per hour instead of 25. Obviously if you keep the bike locked to 15.5 miles per hour then you won't even notice. The 140 km range is pretty much always in pedal assist 1. Now the problem with that is that pedal assist 1 looks like this. No one wants to be going that slow, so realistically, if you're willing to do most of the work, then sure, you can go 140 kilometers, but it's just not going to be very fun. So far, the bike has received a lot of praise, but there are a few things I would change if I could. Shimano Tawny gears, I'd probably change them to Altus, or something better than that. But I don't really mind Tawny gears, I'll be honest. I quite, I'm, I'm used to the, the lever now push up with my thumb to go down a gear, press the button to go up a gear. I'm used to it and they work fine. The brakes always like hydraulic over and mechanical, but these fine again, if adjusted right, if you can pull them, the levers with enough force, they're fine. It's just that hydraulic brakes feel really nice. The fact that you don't even have to put any effort in. I think I probably would like the option of rear suspension, lockable rear suspension. So weird about this bike, is that the, the rack at the front, which by the way holds up to 13 kilograms, doesn't move when the handlebars move. 
it just stays in the same direction, which is really odd. The front rack not moving doesn't only result in a weird optical illusion, but the front light is attached to the front rack, meaning that when you turn the handlebars, the light doesn't turn with them. It stays facing forward with the rack. It's not a major problem, but it means the light sort of lags behind a little since it aligns itself with the body of the bike and not the front wheel. That said, the front and rear lights have a decent strength and as usual the backlight is also a brake light. People will have no problem seeing you at night and you'll have no problem seeing them. One final thing I would change is the time it takes for the pedal assist to kick in. Now some people might actually like this because I guess it's also a safety feature to prevent accidental power activation, but it does take a long time for it to kick in. So start pedaling. Pedal assist comes in now. So I'm going to do it by counting. Slow down a bit. So, one, two, three, about three seconds. Which doesn't seem like much, but it feels like much when you're riding. However, it's only really a problem if you haven't unlocked the throttle. Despite a few niggles and extremely optimistic range claims, this is one fantastic bike. I love the utility, I love the looks, I love the form factor. The step through frame is not only great for less flexible people, but it also makes the bike feel a bit like a motor scooter. It's quick, but it's also really convenient. It's a proper bike that can get you anywhere. Oh no, I need to pop down to the hardware store, pick up a few things. I'll get on the L20. I need to go down to school and pick up my son. I'll go down the L20. I need to take this alien and run away from the FBI. I'll pop on the L20. I'll get through here. I'll pop off the L20. So to sum up, if you can only have one e-bike, which to be fair, the majority of people, that's true, and you don't need it to be foldable, then the Angway L20 is a damn good, <laughs> a really good option. It's a thousand and ninety-nine pounds, which is a really good price for this. I love the fact that if you want to go to somewhere where the laws are a bit more lenient than in the UK, you can go there. You can unlock the bike. You can get that extra speed. You can use the throttle. But if you're worried about the law. You can have this bike rated 250 watts. No throttle if need be, but it will very easily get you up decent hills, which is what it should be like really. All 250 watt e-bikes should be like this, rated at 250, but with a bit more power underneath the hood. Not that they've got a hood. I wish I had a hood. And I'm soaking wet. Ah, in this torrential downpour, I do feel really safe with those thick four inch fat tires with their fantastic grip. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But just like the weather, this bike's ridiculous too. I think it's my favourite e-bike. If you're thinking about getting the L20, and if you're looking for one, I really would take it under consideration. Do consider using uh, affiliate links in the description below. By clicking on those links to uh, get to the Engway website, any purchase made, it does help the channel a lot, so it uh, shows your appreciation for this review in this torrential rain and of course I reviewed many other Engwe e-bikes including the M20 and others the Engine Pro they've got some fantastic bikes do check out the channel if you do like e-bikes we review a lot of them now so uh, make sure you subscribe oh indicate left indicate left and if you uh, enjoyed me getting absolutely soaking wet don't forget to hit that thumbs up button i did i just fling myself with water and until next time thanks for watching all the way until the end ride safe and stay dry <laughs> <laughs>